Now here we are, we've talked about overheads, we've talked about um, props. Uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, matters of style. You have to, of course, develop your own style. And things that work for some people won't work for others. And that raises the question of how do you decide what elements of style to bring into your own persona. Here I would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, an interview once held with uh, Ingemar Stenmark. Ingemar Stenmark was one of the great skiers of the uh, 1970s, and in that decade, people rarely talked about who would win the World Cup. The reason was because everybody knew that Stenmark would win the World Cup, so everybody talked only about who would be second best in the World Cup. And one day, uh, Stenmark was interviewed and asked how he became such a good skier. Someone said, uh, well, do you, uh, did you have some idol that you copied? And Stenmark said, no, he didn't copy anybody, but he looked at everybody. And he knew that he didn't have exactly the same body or the exact same set of capabilities, of athletic skills that anyone else might have. So he said to himself, I will look at all of my competition, not with a view toward copying them, but with a view toward finding points of style that I can adapt to my own skills and my own body. And that's the way that he became the world's best skier for his decade. Not by copying any one individual, because that would have doomed him to being the second best of that individual, but rather by looking at many people and finding bits and pieces that he could adapt into his own combination so as to become the best Ingemar Stenmark he could possibly be. So that's what I recommend to you, that you watch the people who you consider to be good lecturers and look carefully at what you think makes them good lecturers and ask yourself how you can adapt those points into the development of your own speaking style. Now having said that, I should also add that it's okay to be eccentric. Because a degree of eccentricity provides one of the handles by which people hang on to you. And sometimes these can make a big difference in the way people react to what you're doing. I uh, once took a course in uh, nuclear physics at MIT. And on the first day of class, I said to my friend sitting next to me, I can't stand this stuff. I'm going to drop this course. And my friend, said, my friend said to me, what do you think of that guy's tie? The instructor was wearing some garish tie, and he said, let's come back one more time and see if he wears another garish tie. <laughs> so he came into the lecture the second, uh, in, the, in the second class. He was wearing the same tie as he wore the first time. So my friend said to me, well, let's come back one more time and see if he's wearing that tie again. And before you know it, it was the end of the semester, and I had taken a course in nuclear physics. So sometimes these eccentricities can be extremely uh, entertaining and uh, useful as handles. A third thing you might want to incorporate into your uh, personal style is the uh, use of the story. I've used many of them in this talk. I use many of them in all of my lectures. I just use one about eccentricity. And it's the story that's delivered in a lecture that makes a lecture in part one of the things that makes it different uh, from a book. People like to hear stories. They like to hear uh, them in part because they know that they can get the stuff from the book anywhere but they can only get the stories from you by attending your lectures. So they are an important way of distinguishing yourself from, or distinguishing what you're doing from other uh, mechanisms for teaching and learning. So that then is a, is a bit on the subject of um, the development of a personal style. <clears throat>